Hey, what is up guys? My name is Achurno and welcome to episode 9 of Game Programming. Okay, so yesterday we made this awesome screen class and what else did we do? Um, and we also initialized it and got it running. And uh, today we're going to actually use this class to fill some pixels in on the screen and, um, and basically demonstrate our, all of our future plans to render stuff onto our screen. So again, our game is still in its normal stands for, for some reason this takes forever to open um here it is with just a black screen so we're gonna use um we're gonna use this screen class to actually control what gets entered onto the screen so let's get started with that so again in screen.java in our screen class i'm just going to create a new method called render so public void render now i will give it parameters in the future like offsets and um stuff like region scrolling uh but not right now because um well we don't need it yet so why put it in and this is going to contain two for loops okay so i'm just going to type for int y equals zero y is less than height y plus plus and then inside of this for loop right not not outside it but inside it i'm going to make another one for x so for in x equals zero X is less than width, X plus plus. And I'll explain all this right now. So what a for loop is, is it's kind of the same as our while loop, right? A while loop basically keeps doing whatever's in here in chronological order until this statement is not true. So until running equals false in this case. A for loop does the same thing, except it keeps on, re it keeps on looping through what's in, in between the, um, in between the, the curly brackets. Um, until, you know, this statement is, is true. So in other words, what's happening is, is, is we're creating a variable called y. We're setting it equal to zero. You can see that, that variable is an integer. Um, and we're saying that keep looping until y is less than, while, le while y is less than height, keep looping, keep doing what's in the brackets. And every time you complete one successful loop, add one to y. So what's happening is every time it's completing everything that's in between the brackets, it's adding one, just one, to y. Um, and it's going to keep doing it until y is actually greater than height, because that's when it's going to stop. So while y is less than height, um, keep, um, keep doing what's in the brackets. And it's going to do the same thing for x, but for x is less than width. Now, how is this going to practically translate into into our, um, into our screen, what's gonna happen is, height, remember, is, we've defined by creating the screen class, height is equal to this, and width is equal to that. So in other words, our height is the height of our, our, our buffered image, and um, the width is, is the width of our buffered image. So what's gonna happen is, each one of these, um, each one of these loops is gonna basically render one pixel to the screen, uh, one pixel of a particular color, which we'll decide in the future. But um, or we'll get the computer to, computer to decide for us in the future. Um, so yeah, each one of these like iterations represents one um, one pixel. Now, why is this x loop inside the y loop? Well, the reason it's inside it is because we actually wanted to render every pixel on the screen, not just all of the y pixels and then all of the x pixels. Because what happens is, again, I'll open Paint.net just to demonstrate this to you guys. Sorry, paints on a different hard drive. I've got an SSD for like all my main programs and primary stuff, and then I've got my I've got like two other hard drives, um, a two terabyte one and a one terabyte one. Apart from the one hundred twenty eight gig SSD to hold all my all my things, and they're both like pretty much full. So <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so I'll just I'll just draw a grid. That'll that'll do. Eh, maybe a bit smaller. All right. So again, each one of these represents a pixel. And, and what I'm basically saying here is that um, if, we, if, if this was outside, right? If these four loops were like this, then what would happen is it would um, it'd do every one of these pixels. Uh, let me just. Every one of these pixels and every one of these pixels. So hopefully you guys can see that adequately right but then it's got all these pixels that it wouldn't do because remember it's going to keep filling in these pixels for x while x is less than width which is for the entire width 
and it's going to keep in keep filling in keep filling in all the y pixels with uh with color until um y is y is greater than height. So while y is less than height, it's going to continue doing that, which is for all this. But what happens to all of these pixels? We need all these filled in as well. And by putting and by putting this method uh, this loop inside this loop, right, and creating a nested for loop, we're basically saying that for every pixel for y, we're going to go all the way through the width of the x pixels. So in other words, what, what, what we're saying is when y equals 0, for example, fill in all the x, x pixels. When y is equal to 1, fill in all the x pixels. When y is 2, fill in all the x pixels, and so on. And what happens is for every y value, we're filling the, the, enti the entire width of the screen, the entire width of x values. And what we end up in, in the end is an entire screen filled with, with data. Okay, so hopefully that'll help you guys out um, in explaining that. Now, um, now that we've created this loop, we can actually start applying pixels. And this might be a bit difficult to understand, so I'm going to try and um, explain this as much as I can. So pixels, again, we're referring to this array of pixels. Pixels x plus y times width equals, and then we'll set it to a color. So just to demonstrate this, I'm going to set it to pink or magenta. So again, 0x to indicate that we're going to use a hexadecimal. FF, 0, 0, FF. I don't think it went over the hexadecimal bit, and I'll do that in a second. Um, okay, so what are we saying here? With this line of code, we're saying that, um, that obviously pixels is an, is an array which contains um, every pixel on our screen, right? An integer representing every pixel on our screen. This is, this is the index of which one we currently want to access. So again, I shouldn't, probably shouldn't have closed paint.net, um, but as you can imagine, each of these pixels is an integer and we, we need to basically tell it, okay, this time around in the, in the loop, we're going to be adding data to, um, to this pixel to this pixel right here, or I don't know, we're up to like the 200th um, iteration in this loop, we're gonna be accessing this pixel here. So in other words, we need to tell um, this pixel array which, which particular index, which particular pixel we wanna apply this data to. So the way we do that is we tell it to access, you know, this. Now, what is x plus y times width? Now, again, um, just like a few moments ago, I, I, I showed you that what happens with our um, our loops is we're accessing the entire width of the, um, the entire width of the screen. Um, and so what we need to do then is actually say that, okay, if X is, if X is like three, because what's happening is because this is a one dimensional array, um, there is no like coordinate system. So we kind of have to make our own. And the way we can do that is by doing this. So we're saying that if X is 20, right? Say we just want something like 20. I'll just write over here. We, we, we want to access the coordinate uh, 20 X and like, I don't know, 30 Y, right? We want to access that coordinate. Now, if we count pixels, let's just say that that's 20 X and that that's 30 Y. So we want to actually access, uh, you know, this, Going to access this pixel right here, for example, right? And that, that pixel is going to have this coordinate. Now, what happens is if obviously there's, there's no room here to actually put coordinates, and we sort of need to convert this into coordinates. And the way we can do that is by using this math. So what we're saying here is that um, because, because the way that pixels work is like every number, this is just one single number. It's not two numbers, it's not, it's not a coordinate, it's just one number. So what happens is when it gets to the edge of the screen, right, let's just say that's pixel number 50, this, this one right here is gonna be pixel number 51, 52, 53, 54, etc. okay? Hopefully you guys get that. It's gonna start from pixel zero up here, and it's gonna go all the way to the end of the screen, and then it's gonna go down one row, and that'll be pixel number 51. So it's, it's sort of, it's scanning it, it's scanning it um, from left to right. Uh, so what we need to do here is say, okay, so 20, again, more maths. So 20, because we've selected, you know, for example, um, the 20 to be coordinate, 20 plus 30 times width, which let's just say this width is, um, let's just say that's 100. Okay, so what's going to happen is it's going to say, okay, so 
the x is going to be 20. And then the width is just going to be, um, or the y rather, the y, the y coordinate is going to be y times width. Because, think of it this way, this is actually kind of hard to explain. Um, I don't know if you guys are getting this, drop a comment letting me know if you, um, if you understand what I'm saying. But basically what I'm saying here is that, um, I don't know, it's just a maths, it's just a basic maths thing. You know that there are 100 pixels per row, right? There are 100 pixels per row. So naturally, you know, to go down a row, right, you have to select which row you want. So in this case, and remember, that's actually how it's happening because multiplication and division comes before addition and subtraction. Um, so we want to go down a row 30 and across to um, column 20. Okay, that actually might be better if I talk about it in columns and rows rather than X and Y um, axis and coordinates and stuff like that. So again, we're going all the way down a row 30, which might be here, right? We're down a row 30 and we're also going across 20, 20 pixels. Okay, so short, that's pretty much all you need to know. Uh, this is just a way. So with this times width thing, you can actually replace and I'll show you guys that in a, in a second, actually. But right now, we're filling the entire screen with pink. Okay, now hexadecimal. Um, was it last episode? Maybe two episodes ago, I don't know. Yeah, it would have been two episodes ago. I talked about hexadecimal formats and how that works. So, this is pink. Uh, again, if I open page.net and I bring this guy over here, you can see that if I enter FF000FF, that'll give us pink right here. So that's the hexadecimal um, for pink or for magenta. Um, we we can't just enter it just like that into Java. If we want to, if we if we're actually using a hexadecimal, we have we actually have to put zero and x as a prefix in front of that hexadecimal. As you can see, the error goes away. And it's fine. Now, if we wanted to refer to binary, for example, we'd put zero b and then you know the binary. Okay, and you'll see that that actually doesn't work because we need to be using Java. Uh, version 7, 1.7. Um, I should probably actually upgrade to 1.7, but we'll keep this project to 1.6. But um, that's how you use binary. Uh, we're using hexadecimal, so we indicate it by that. And again, it does not matter if this is uppercase or lowercase. Fs, you can make some of them uppercase, you can make some of them lowercase, up to you. But that is that color. Um, now, good. We've got a render method, and we're, when we're rendering stuff to the screen, so now let's actually render something onto the screen because I've talked for a long time and I could I could end the episode here because we're at we are at 13 minutes but um I think you guys are enjoying the longer episode so I might quickly just render something onto onto the screen so again we've got this screen method now right here in our render method we need to actually render the screen now for the way we do that first of all we actually need to call this render method it's public so we can do that uh, simply by typing screen which is the class dot render and that will actually just execute this method. And remember, because we are in this render method, which is in this uh, while loop, um, this screen.render method will get, get run again and again. So it will constantly update our screen. Now, the second thing we need to do is actually set this pixel array, right, which contains all of our pixel data, to, to this pixel array, which, uh, it, which, uh, which is actually what tells our buffered image what to display. Um, and we can do that by again creating a for loop, which basically just copies the array. So for in i equals zero, i is less than pixels dot length, i plus plus. So again, this is going to be a for loop. It's going to run for the duration of of pixels. So how how many how many um values we have in pixels, the size of that array. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna do that. So it's gonna go through every index in the pixels array. We'll set pixels i. So again, pixels at index i. Um, we'll set that equal. We'll set these pixels equal to screen dot pixels. So equals screen dot pixels i. Um, so yeah, obviously it's gonna go. It's gonna work its way through every every bit of variables. I, what's what's the proper name for that? I don't actually know. Um, I'm sitting here trying to think up of a good uh, of a good name, but every um I guess every index, every um every every part of that array 
every nut, every variable, every integer in that array. It's going to go through every integer, right? And I is, of course, going to cycle through all of our. Um, I'm not going to teach you basic for loops. You should already know that. Uh, if not, I'm sure you could Google it or something. But it's going to go through every every value of this, every every um every variable that's contained in the pixels array, and it's going to set it equal to the to to this. So essentially, we're setting this equal to this. Okay. And now we actually have to draw that pixels array onto the screen. Now we've created a buffered image, but we're not drawing it onto, onto the screen. All we're drawing right now is this, is this black um, color. So under here, remember this is in chronological order. Make sure you don't do it here, because if you, if you do actually draw your pixels here, what's gonna happen is it's gonna draw the pixels, and then on top of the pixels, it's gonna draw this, this black rectangle. So make sure it does follow in chronological order, so make sure you do it after. So G dot draw image, which allows us to actually draw our buffered image to the screen. G dot draw image, and uh, I don't know what parameters I have to specify. So the image, first of all, which is just image, the starting X and Y, and the size of the image, which is gonna be uh, get width again, and get height. And then for the image observable, just put null. Okay, simple as that. So we're basically drawing this image to the screen. So let's hit the debug button and see what happens. Okay, so right now we have a pink image and let's actually get rid of this, this black that's filling in. So now what we've got is, is this draw image and it's drawing this image with this color. Um, and then here it is, you can see it's pink, which is our color. So brilliant, that worked. Now, the thing that I wanted to show you is the coordinate system. So again, if we wanna target pixel 20 and um, and y30, so x is, x is 20, y is 30. If I hit this run button and I'll zoom in so you can see, you can see that one pixel here, well it's actually more than one pixel because we're scaling up by three, but that one pixel there is, is affected. And if I actually play around with this a bit, um, let me just come over here. I can change this to 40, hit control S, and it will actually change the location here. Now you can see that the previous one was left behind because it wasn't erased and we'll talk about that in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed. Please hit the like button if you did and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.